because the lower leg of this bird is so long that it did not fit in my 3D printer. So I had to split a whole prosthesis into two pieces that could be mounted together. This bird is a hunting bird and it kills its prey by stepping on it. There are some studies that uh, shows 5 kilogram bird can stump 5 times his weight. The biggest challenge was to enforce the whole prosthesis so it will not break by stumping. I told them I need experts. I need people that knows the animal and also a vet. Because if I have this, then they can tell me exactly when I produce the, the prosthesis or the device for the animal, if the animal is acting normal, if it's walking the usual way that I cannot uh, see. For me, this is the future, because with this we can easily design something and if it breaks, then you can reinforce this. So I think it will take over more and more, but it has to be in a controlled environment. What if we could save the glaciers with a blanket? It's, it looks like this. And it's uh, porous on this side and a bit more hardcore on this side and contains of uh, rough wool that is not needed for, for uh, making clothes and also cornstarch. And it's very strong and durable and it hinders the sun, the UV radiation, and it also isolates from warm air. And the third thing is that it isolates from sublimation. You know, sometimes ice and snow can convert directly to gas, to water vapor, and it hinders that. So the three processes that it hinders, so it's very efficient. This biodegradable cloth was placed over part of the Hialags Glacier in northern Sweden for the duration of the summer. It was carried up and laid out by hand to reduce carbon emissions from the project. At least 3.5 meters of ice were saved from melting within the 40 square meter surface that was covered. So all together we could uh, registrate between three and a half to four meters protection. Uh, if we would have come one month earlier in May, we were, it was a very warm June, we would have been uh, able to protect another meter. So maybe four and a half to five meters of melting is possible to, uh, to protect uh, with this kind of efficient material. While covering glaciers has been tried elsewhere, this is a first for Nordic countries. The team hopes to recreate its experiment and cover more surface area and get more scientists involved. So this is a test and now we're deciding, can we enhance this area? Is it possible to do without emissions? Can we show how much we can protect?
this man is turning an invasive species into cleaner cooking fuel. Hi, my name is Dominic Wanjihi Kahumbu. I am a, an entrepreneur and a renewable energy uh, practitioner. Kenyan entrepreneur Dominique Kahumbu has created a machine that turns biomass into a biogas. He and his team collect an invasive species of water hyacinth, which blankets Lake Victoria and harms aquatic life and local communities. What we're doing out here on Lake Victoria is we're harvesting this, what everyone considers to be a real menace and a pest, an invasive species, and it has many, many negative connotations to it. But the actual fact is water hyacinth is a blessing in disguise. The digesters use biomass, such as water hyacinth, to create biogas, which burns cleaner than charcoal or wood. Two to three kilograms of the weed reportedly generate enough fuel to power a cooker for four hours. Rudimentary household stoves and open fires that use charcoal and wood are hazardous, according to the World Health Organization. The elderly people who should be retiring are choking themselves to death, which is, you know, it's, it's criminal at this, in, this, in this day and age that we should allow such a thing. When we have very, very, this, this, this is biogas. They should all have biogas. So far, 50 free and subsidized digesters have been distributed in Kisimu and Kenya. However, their cost is prohibitive for most families. Kumbu says that capital investment will facilitate the scaling up of digester production and distribution, and larger versions of the machine for restaurants and farms are being tested. There's thousands of organizations out there that are looking for where can I buy carbon credits, where can I you know, sponsor green movements and what have you. Um, these are the kind of projects we're, we're trying to look for. All we need is the capital investment to invest in the equipment, and then the sale of the fertilizer and the sale of the gas pays for the running. This could be the game-changing ingredient for batteries. That's what researchers are working on at Estonia's University of Tartu. They've discovered a way to use peat, a layer of soil that is relatively plentiful in Northern Europe, in sodium ion batteries. Sodium ion batteries are an alternative to the dominant lithium ion batteries, which are becoming more and more expensive due to their use of earth metals, such as lithium, cobalt, and nickel. Last year, global demand for lithium was approximately 320,000 metric tons. This is expected to grow to 1 million metric tons by 2025 and 3 million metric tons by 2030. Peat could be a cheap option for sodium ion batteries, and it produces a good quality carbon powder, according to the researchers. Decomposed peat is put into a high temperature furnace for two to three hours to convert it into the powder, which is then used in the batteries. From this uh, one ton of peat, you can produce nearly 100, 200 kilograms of uh, carbon powder. Of, of course, you have to work to do some uh, activation and so on, decomposition of this, but in any case, it's possible. However, peat bogs also sequester an enormous amount of carbon, one third of the world's soil carbon, and removing it can release large amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Only 3% of the land area on Earth is covered by peatland, making these habitats rare. It's unclear if this new technology takes this into account, or what its effects on global warming causing emissions would be. The school did not respond to requests for comment. Lukasz Bednarski, a market analyst, told Reuters that this technology will have to prove it can be scaled up and commercialized. In July, Chinese company CATL was the first major battery maker to unveil a sodium ion battery for electric vehicles. 